Alright, this is Zero of Dark As You Know Me, and welcome back to another one of my Guild Wars 2 video tutorials. Today, I'm on my Azured Ellie, and I want to talk about conditions and boons. <clears throat> and I'll start first with conditions. Conditions are similar to other games' debuffs or negative conditions placed on your character to damage them or hinder their performance. On the opposite side, boons are similar to buffs in other games or things placed upon or gained upon a character to increase their Greetings, weapon bearer. performance, combat performance or other aspects of a fight. And the reason I wanted to demo majority of this with the Elementalist is because the Elementalist has a wide variety of boons they have access to through either their attunements or their skills and traits. The first boon I want to talk about Spark to play. is the Might Boon. Might is signified by a sword icon on your UI right above your utilities. It's a boon that stacks in intensity and the purpose of might is to increase outgoing damage. This is direct damage and condition damage. How are you? And it has a maximum of 25 stacks of intensity. Using a glimpse of Elemental Harmony, I got three stacks of might. And if you look at your stats, your power goes up by Uh, give or take a little under a hundred something, or not hundred something, but a little under a hundred, about like ninety-seven. The next boon on the list is regeneration, and regeneration has a three-plus icon right above your uh, utilities. Regeneration is a defensive boon and it re gradually recovers health to your character over time. So if you were to take damage and you gain the regeneration boon, you would gradually recover that damage over a set period of time. Regeneration stacks in duration. There's no way to directly increase the uh, HP regain from regeneration by applying more of it. It will just increase in duration so multiple regeneration boons are cumulative as far as their duration goes. The only way to increase the heals you get from regeneration is by increasing your healing power. The next particular boon I want to talk about is Swiftness, which is indicated by a shoe type icon on your screen, and increases your character's speed by 33%. It's a good boon to use when you're uh, transversing large uh, areas of ground, like such in World v. World or the map of Tyria. It's also good for running away from people or running to people. The next one I want to talk about is protection. Now protection is a very good defensive boon as by applying it to your character you reduce all incoming damage by 33%. This is direct damage condition damage is not affected or reduced by protection boon. But any other burst damage or direct damage applied to your character is reduced by 33% and it helps on keeping a character on their toes and migrating incoming damage. The next one I'm going to talk about is Fury. It is like a splash 
uh, iconic icon on your UI and it increases your character's chances of performing a critical hit by a flat 20%. So if you start off with zero critical strike chance, like critical chance, and you apply fury to your character, you'd automatically get a flat 20%. So it's a good offensive boon to use when you want to inflict double damage or burst damage. The next one I want to talk about is Yeah, I got a trade for it. Is the vigor boon, which increases your character's re endurance regeneration by 100% and stacks in duration. And what endurance is, it's is it's the yellow semicircle above your health bar that goes down when you roll, so it's the resources, resource that governs your ability to roll. So by gaining endurance, it allows you to regenerate that resource a lot faster in the line for more dodges. The next boon I want to talk about after Vigor Get is him. stability. Stability is a I type icon and this is a very very potent boon to have and it's defensive or can be used offensive too but it negates crowd control effects on your character things that make you lose control of your character for a set amount of time so by getting stability you can prevent or block those type of effects on you for the duration of stability so it's a very good boon to have Boons that I didn't cover. <laughs> Just to double check, to see, I see that I did not skip over any of the boons that I wanted to showcase. All right, two that I didn't show on the Elementalist is Retaliation, because I don't believe Elementalists have uh, traits or abilities to gain Retaliation. But Retaliation is boons that damage anyone that hits you. And damage that is dealt through the Retaliation boon is governed by your power so the more power you have the more damage you're going to get out of the retaliation boon also the duration can be stacked up to five times so you can't stack retaliation more than five times in a row yeah. also as it states the damage won't be dealt if the attack is prevented or avoided and another very 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 limited or exclusive boon is Aegis which blocks the next attack aimed at that character. Aegis is uh, more or less exclusively to the Guardian. They are the ones that produce and uh, exhibit the Aegis boon. There's also a way you can get it through rune combinations and uh, some other class skills. But other than that, you'll mostly see Aegis on a Guardian. And it's basically uh, damage migration by blocking one attack. Alright, those are the list of boons. Now I want to touch on the list of conditions, and these are the debuffs that can be placed on your character. All right, the first one I'm going to show on the list is burning, since the uh, double dagger elementalist fire tomb has quite a few access to burning, and burning is the single most damaging over time ability a character can possess and it stacks in duration. 
stacks in duration. And burning will usually look like a uh, usually ready with some kind of fire animation or not. NPC in the match is being or rather oh, oh. rambunctious and annoying. And down again. Anyway, yes. Burning is a damage over time condition. I'll just go ahead and use a little golems for my demonstrations because they don't fight back. And it's easier to see the, the damage of it. And it ticks per, per second and stacks in duration. The next condition I want to talk about that is most uh, regularly recurring is bleeding. Bleeding stacks in intensity, meaning that if you stack higher uh, stacks of bleed on a target, the more damage you accumulate over the duration of those bleeds before they fall off. Eight stacks of bleeds. As you see, the 46s are rapidly appearing, appearing above their heads is the damage that those eight stacks did over that set amount of time. Let's see. Another ability another condition is blind. Which makes your uh character or your foe miss their next attack. So it is similar to uh Aegis as far as damage migration goes. It's a very good defensive condition to use if you can if you can apply it. And it's really good at negating uh, heavy hitters. In PvE, it's not very good on uh, boss mobs, legendary mobs, because they seem to negate blindness. Even though it's tabbed on them, they still hit through it. But for like lower level mobs and uh, characters in PvP or foes in PvP, it's a very uh, nice defensive condition to use. Next down the list is Chill. Elementalists do have access to chill. Chill is similar to a snare as it reduces your character's movement speed by 66% and increases skill recharge by 33%, I believe. No, skill recharge by 66%. And it has a little snowflake icon in red. So that would mean you've been chilled, and usually your character will have some kind of blue animation or blue look to their to their figure as well. That shows chill. Confusion is a condition that stacks in intensity, and what confusion does is it inflicts damage to your character every time you use a skill. This also applies to your auto attack because it is a skill and you will take damage every time you use a auto attack while used. At higher stacks, just like bleeding, the damage is increased. And it is identified by a swirly uh, kind of hypnotic icon, Cripple. Crippling shows a uh, leg. It shows basically the swiftness leg icon with a little slash through it. Like that. And crippling is another one of Guild Wars 2 snares and it reduces your character's movement speed by 50%. And stacks in duration. Chill also stacks in duration. 
Next is fear. Fear is a very uh, usually brief controlling ability. It's a uh, very uh, connected to the necromancer. Although other classes' fears currently last longer than necromancers, but they don't have the as many ways to fear you as a necromancer does. Fear makes your character run directly away from the person that cast fear on you. Or if you're the person casting fear, it will make the uh, opponent run directly away from you. And it's the uh, icon for it is a little ghost type uh, icon in red, which indicates fear. Fear can also be broken with stun breakers or stability or blocked by stability. The next condition on the list I want to talk about is immobilization, which is a chain cross. Immobilization is the third Guild Wars 2 snare. Instead of reducing your movement speed, it completely immobilizes you and make it and makes it where your character is unable to move. And you'll see a chain animation around the character. Immobilization is a good way to uh, begin a burst after your opponent, in PvP anyway, after your opponent has used up their uh, most of their defensive cooldowns and dodges. Immobil immobilization is a good way to start a nice clean burst. In PvE, it is a good way to keep folks off you or contain foes or initial adds such as in the dungeon or keep them off of your main tank. Immobilization stacks and duration. Next condition is poison, which is showed by a green or a skull icon, a green skullish icon. Poison is a damage over time ability. It also reduces your character's ability to heal. Ingoing and outgoing heals are reduced by 33%. So in PvP context, it is a good condition to apply. Uh, when you're wearing your foe down or they're about to pop their heal and so forth. In PvE, it is a uh, good standard uh, damage over time ability. Some mobs do have the ability to heal, so in some cases it could be quite useful in a stack duration. The next condition I'm going to touch on is vulnerability. Vulnerability is a condition that stacks in intensity and it can accumulate a maximum of 25 stacks. Each stack of vulnerability increases the ingoing damage to the target by 1% per stack, so a total of a 25% damage increase. Per stack, vulnerability is a very good way to increase your personal damage as well as your party's damage in a PvE setting. It's also a very good uh, way in PvP to incorporate into a burst type build because you know that applying vulnerability increases your damage to the target by 1%. So it's very good in burst and power builds. And in PvE, it's a good way to improve your personal and team damage. It stacks in intensity and is shown or identified by a broken shield type icon. The last condition in Guild Wars 2 is a condition called weakness. It has the might symbol with a slash through it and it is red and what weakness does is it reduces your character's ability to recover endurance or roll your roll resource and also grants the target a 50% chance glance and basically what a glance is in the game I know it's kind of a vague term or whatever but a glance is basically uh, a chance for your character to inflict anywhere between 50 and 75 percent reduced damage to the target on non-critical hits. 
weakness, stacks, and duration. So those are the boons and conditions of Guild Wars 2. Some classes have a lot of access to certain boons, and some have limited access to certain boons. Let's say a Necromancer has quite limited access to the protection boon, while classes like the Guardian and, Elements and Elementalist have a wide variety of ways to gain uh, protection and stability, and vice versa. So this is the overview of positive and negative effects on your character. I'll go over them each one more time, starting with the boons. There's Might, which shows the sh sword type icon. It stacks in intensity. Might increases your character's outgoing damage, both condition and direct damage. Getting healthy. Next boon is Regeneration, which your character gains health every second, and it stacks in duration. Third is Swiftness. Increases your character's movement speed by 33%. Shows a shoe icon. Fourth is protection. It reduces incoming damage, direct damage to your character by 33%. Condition damage is not reduced by protection. Fury, a splash icon, increases your character's ability to land a critical hit by 20%. Never felt Bigger, a leaf type icon that grants your character a 100% 100% increase in endurance regeneration, the dodge resource. I will show stability here in a second. Ability, an eye, fat eye type icon protects your character from crowd controls or CCs or abilities that make you lose control of your character for a uh, short amount of time. The other two are Aegis which blocks the next attack and stacks in duration really exclusive to the Guardian and the other one we did the element of this doesn't have is retaliation which reflects incoming damage back to the stores stacks in duration with a maximum of five stacks the damage the retaliation deals is governed by your power attribute now we'll touch on the conditions starting with burning burning is the highest damage over time condition a player or foe can apply up to you Next is bleed. I command stone and soil. Stacks in intensity at a maximum of 25 stacks and damages over time. Blind, a defensive condition, causes the target's next hit to miss. Stacks in duration. Elementalists don't really have access to blind naturally. They do have some uh, cross combos they can form to inflict blind, but they don't have it naturally. Chill reduces your character's ability to move by 66%, increases skill recharge by 66%. Confusion stacks in intensity causes damage to uh, foes and characters when they use skills. Your auto attack is a skill, so if you are confused, every time you auto attack, you will inflict damage onto yourself. In PvE, mobs attack every 3 seconds, and when they attack, they use a skill. So condition is not as potent in PvE as it is in PvP or on faster foes. Cripple. The Swiftness Shoe icon with a slash through it in red reduces your character's ability to move by 50%. Fear, a ghost looking icon in red, 
causes your character or the foe to run directly away from the source of the fear. Uh, most fears come from necromancers, but there are other classes that can fear as well. Immobilization. Cross sword icon. Also shows the chain animation around the character. Completely restrains your character's ability to move at all. It uh, basically roots you. And it's a very good way to uh, start or set up a burst. Or in PvE, control a uh, mob. Or keep a mob off of, off of a player. Next one is Poison, a green skull icon. It's a damage over time. Ability, stacks in duration, not intensity. But also reduces any uh, personal healing or out outgoing healing performed by the uh, target. Next is vulnerability stacks in intensity. Vulnerability increases the damage to the target by one percent per stack, with a maximum of twenty-five percent. Increased damage to the target is a good way to increase one's personal damage and team damage and also a good condition to incorporate into a burst or spike build. Weakness, the last condition. Red sword type icon reduces your character's ability to regenerate endurance by 50% and also grants your character or the target a 50% chance to fumble and by fumble it generally means that your character has a chance to inflict 50 to 75 percent less damage than normal on non-critical hits. So these are the boons and conditions of Gear Wars 2. Thank you for stopping to watch my video. I hope you uh, have a better grasp of the buffs and debuffs in the Gear Wars 2 world. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like me, uh, subscribe. If you have anything, questions, comments, or things you would like to see in upcoming videos, go ahead and pitch me a message. This is Zero or Dark as you know me, and I hope to see you out there.